Today, we are going to show you how you can create reusable automated host processes with MicroFocus Veristream. So we get in here, we have to establish what type of project we're being working with. In our case today, we're going to be connecting to an IBM 3270 application running on our MicroFocus Enterprise server. So I select the uh, 3270 terminal type that I'm going to be working with, and I give it the uh, IP or DNS of that uh, host that I'm connecting to, as well as the uh, port number that the application is listening on. Once I establish the connection properties, I can connect, and this area on our design tool will look like a terminal emulator and allow me to interact with it using our keyboard so I can navigate the host session as needed. We use this area on the right-hand side of this panel to identify aspects of the screen that we want to work with. We simply start by naming the screen that we're, we're on. We use these patterns, this concept called patterns to set up recognition for the screen location. We use attributes synonymous with variables to interact with the host screen to either pass data to the screen or retrieve data from the screen. So in this case, we're going on this screen, we're going to define a user ID and a password. And it sets up the position for us and we can establish a row column position length and when we create our procedures we're going to be able to fill these variables with values and, and pass those on the screen then we set up these operations and these operations are navigation commands that are used to uh, navigate from screen known screen to known screen so we record these events and we're going to record a a navigation from our bank 10 screen and i'm going to go to my bank 20 screen and when i execute that it's going to land on the next screen so what we're going to do is create a test suite uh, procedure that's going to allow us to log in as a particular user display their account types and what we want to do is interrogate account number and look for the word uh, look for the account type is checking to determine if the user has a, a valid checking account so we're going to navigate to the checking details screen and we're going to look for the account number and determine if it if it's valid by numerics as well as the account type is checking. And then once the procedure is done, it's going to navigate back to the login screen, reset for another test. I can then use our procedure editor to create units of work that allow me to pass variable data in and receive data back from these host applications. To do that, I'm going to designate a, a series of screens that, that I want the, uh, this procedure to navigate through. I'm going to indicate that I want it to start on the Bank 10 sign-on screen, and I'm going to go into our procedure editor. It gives me a visual representation of what screens I'm going to be navigating through and what data that I'm going to be interacting with on that screen. So when I indicated I'm going to start on the Bank sign-on screen, it's got a star indicating that the start screen and I'm going to tell it that I'm going to use the user ID and password as my filters or my input for that screen. And then I'm going to navigate to the Bank 20 screen. And then from there, I'm going to look at my account details on Bank 30 account type. And then when I see the checking option, I'm going to navigate to the checking details screen. And I'm going to, from my Bank 35 screen, I'm going to bring back the attributes account number, the account type, and if it does not find the uh, checking account, it's just simply going to bring back the account number associated with, that's on that uh, Bank 30 screen and the account type that's associated with it, that account. And then uh, I'm going to tell it to navigate back to the Bank 10 screen so I can reset that session. So I go ahead and accept that, and close it, and I go ahead and hit OK. Then from here, I can use our debug in, inside of the uh, design tool. It has a debug feature that I can test these procedures. So I'm going to use my procedure test, and I've created this check checking account, and I'm going to pass it a value. I'm going to use my B0001 ID and just put in a password and I execute it, and you'll see that it walks through these screens, and it brings back the account number, checking, and if I use a different ID, bank 
B002 for the ID and execute, it comes back. It did not make it to the uh, last screen, and it only brings back a savings because that particular account did not have any checking. So that that's where the uh, the branch in my procedure comes in. We also have a feature within the de uh, designer that will allow us to visually log or see what screens that were executed when it actually walked through those the host application. And we, we, we tag those in um, model debug messages. So you'll see uh, these statements that are in here called Ed executes our uh, procedure. And if I uh, click on each one of these, you can see the, uh, the values that are put in and, and how it builds the, uh, the procedure and, and the screens that it walks through. And it's a visual representation of all those, the screens and the data that's passed through it to uh, each one of those screens. So here in this, so as you can see, it's building the, uh, the, the navigation. They put an X in the next to the checking account um, option. It hit enter, waited for the screen, and it ended on my bank 35. From there, one, once it landed on that screen, it's going to collect the account number from that position there, collect the account type, and so on. And then uh, the same with uh, this when I executed the second time using the second set of data, using the B002 that's indicated down here. It uh, navigated, comes up to the uh, Bank 30 screen. There is no checking. So it, it took the uh, alternate branch, and in in this case, it just loaded the uh, account number with the account that was listed on the listing screen and the account type as well. And then it just navigates back to the starting screen. So that's it gives you a visual representation of what the, what's going on. It's and it's good for a, a debugging tool when creating your projects to see any error handling or debugging them have to go when you're creating these projects. Procedure created and a few screens modeled, I'm ready to deploy it to the Veristream session server. I can do that by hitting this button on the, uh, the toolbar to deploy to local server or from the file menu I can pull down and, and deploy to local server. Provide my admin credentials for that server and hit OK to deploy, and it's been successfully deployed. Design, I've got it deployed to a server, so that our next step then is to get into the test suite that we're going to execute this procedure from. Show how we can incorporate this web service into a functional test for this host application that we've created. So I can show that we have created a, a service definition here, and I can import that that WSDL or that web service definition from the Veristream server. Here's my uh, WSDL URL, and then I can incorporate that, and then it will make these methods of inside that web service available to me. So I can start my, my functional test here, and I've just created some test uh, account or test inputs, user ID, password, and this is the method, the check checking account that I want to interrogate to see if the account number is numeric and account type is checking. So if I run this test, we should see it's going to, uh, UFT is going to run that service and provide me the, the response back from the, the host application. And if I look at the results that came back, it passed in both accounts. If I expand the checkpoints, it did find the account number. And it is, in fact, a numeric based on my regular expression evaluation. And then it did find a checking account associated with that, with that particular user ID. So if I run this again and provide a different user ID, uh, bank user ID, and run that test to see if, in fact, that this uh, particular account has a checking account associated with it. it. You, From the messages, you can see that it ran the web service again. And if I look at the, uh, the details of this function, or this run, it looks like it failed. If I view the details on this, uh, my checkpoints, 
uh, didn't return. The check, the account number is numeric, but they had no checking account. It did return a savings instead. So we do find out that that test failed. So, and then one other feature we have in this is uh, Veristream is able to convert the those vi visual models or visual logs into HTML and drag those as part of your evidence into the uh, into the functional test that you're you're doing. Uh, and so this is a representation of what that that would look like for you. And we can detail provide the detail of all the connection properties, what is passed to the to the um, uh, the host, all the inputs, the outputs, and uh, the navigation associated with that test, and that could be uh, tagged with your your test and, and as part of your reporting and evidence um, for your your test. So we hope uh, we showed you how you can leverage MicroFocus and to extend your host applications beyond the green screen. And if you have any additional details or need any additional details, please uh, contact us or visit microfocus.com. Thank you.